Hi guys, my name's Tom. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me. I'm trying to keep the momentum rolling a little bit more this year. So here's another video. This was a Zoom demonstration from last year. It was also on my Patreon page, but as you may know, a lot of my content and loads of new exciting content has moved over to my online watercolour school. Links in the description to see that. This is a really fun watercolour of a tiger. Let's just dive into it. All of the same colours except I'm going to swap out the Oriolin cool yellow for a really beautiful Indian yellow. Uh, love Indian yellow. It's got a bit more oranginess to it. It's got a bit more punch to it if you want a warmth like in here. I do have a big squidge of orange out which I may call upon. And the other thing that I'm going to use, I had quinacridone red previously which I'll still use. But I also want a more oranginess obviously, like a more vibrant orange. And so pyrrole red, this is a warm red, a bit like cadmium, except it's a little bit more transparent. Kind of think fire engine red. And it's got a warm orangeiness to it, so it's perfect for kind of dropping in to our tiger here. I'm gonna swap my water out for something cleaner. I'm gonna get a new kitchen roll piece and we're just going to dive straight into it. I'm going to start in exactly the same way as the cheetah. We're going to start with yellow. Oh, I basically want to know how you compose the, the uh, composition. Oh, I see. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one, I felt I kind of liked the photo exactly as it was in, um, uh, in the photo because I do like kind of negative space. So it's nice to kind of have a load of negative space here. You could obviously paint this as a portrait piece and it would have a very different feel. You'd be kind of homing in on the animal a little bit more. Um, the most important thing for me is kind of the placement of the head. Everything else I kind of build out from there. I did have to make up, like the, this part here will be made up because it's not in the photo. Um, but yeah, I, I generally, if, if you look at any, most of my paintings, especially when it's an animal or a bird, I do kind of like to set them off to one side a little bit more and create lots of negative space. Sometimes the photo is already like that in this case. Uh, I forget what the leopard was like. So the leopard, uh, sorry, the cheetah, I kind of homed in on it, cropped in on it a little bit more. I did even consider painting it portrait and just painting it like that, but I kind of like the idea of the light on the spot. So no, I don't, don't always copy the photo in terms of composition, um, but this one, I really like the composition exactly as it was, so I chose to to stick with it. Okay, just need to clean this little bit. And we're gonna start exactly the same way, except it's gonna be Indian yellow instead of um, Oriolan yellow. Okay. So we're gonna go with the big brush again. This is the, the quill brush by Winsor & Newton. Lots of water, just Indian yellow to start with. Love Indian yellow, beautiful colour. And I'm just going to pick a spot and kind of just kick off. Um, bit of an accidental splat, but it doesn't really matter. The only thing I have to consider here is that we have white and we have white in shadow. I don't want the orange to meet the white in shadow. Um, so I'm going to kind of do this sort of thing. Just takes me a moment just to get my eye in, obviously. And. This, this area is also quite exacting in some ways because it's the face so I don't I don't want to go too mad with it. This is all going to go into shadow eventually so that doesn't matter so much. And already I'm kind of feeling like I've sort of at least mapped things out there. It's got a really strong yellow over there. Let's, um, let's blast it out into the background as well a little bit. That could be fun. And come down into there. Lovely. Uh, Lots of yellow kind of in here. Reserve the white up there. Notice that again, I'm just mapping the colour out. I'm not sort of doing it too much. I'm going to, I want sort of texture as well. So I'm going to use the brush on its side and get some broken brush strokes as well if I can. Um, but really just let that paint, really let that paint run and flow and have fun with it. As long as we go nice and light. Um, 
we can really just throw the paint around. It doesn't really matter too much. I think we we come down and out into there. And that's going to be in shadow, the bottom half of the head. So I'm going to leave a light area there. I think that will work quite well. Um, and then we're going to bring that colour up into here. It's very light on the front edge of the nose, so a lot more water in the mix. But I do want to describe that front edge really nicely. Something like that. <coughs> and something like that. Okay, so that's just a start. Look at that colour, beautiful, beautiful colour. Um, a bit more intense over there. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to ramp up the consistency of paint and I'm going to be thinking, right, it gets a little bit more intense in there. And look how the, the, um, the Indian yellow is quite orangey as it is. So what I'm thinking is, right, it gets a little bit more orangey just up there. It's again, I'm kind of trying to think of the subject without any stripes on it and without any shadow on it. So if I could removed all of those things, how would it kind of look? And that's how I'm trying to picture it. So for the first time, I'm going to introduce a little bit of quinacridone red into this area here. And notice just a touch of quinacridone red pushes the color to be a little bit more orangey. It doesn't need a lot of it. Uh, mapping out the colours here, going to move, there's some stripes in here which I'm actually going to paint kind of orangey and then we'll deal with some other ones later. Um, where do I want these little hot shots? It's, I think of them as hot spots of colour. So I'm going to drop a little bit of the more orangey colour in and I'm going to be thinking right on the middle of the back here we can go really kind of orangey. Let's get that running together a little bit more though really coming in down here and now let's see what this does I think it's going to do some fun stuff um, and it's like I said in the first one as long as we keep it light and um, we've got we can kind of do what we like it doesn't really matter too much um, let's kind of dribble some water into it encourage it to do some more interesting things and then I think I'm going to come in uh, here and describe, strangely, I'm going to describe the, the tiger like that with a bit of red. And um, I'm just going to leave that like that, I think. And I think I want to do something with the background here, but not too much. And then we can we can kind of just leave that to dry. Obviously, I'll speed it up. Um, but that's you know that's a perfectly fine start. It's got light and shadow to it. It's got nice variation within the the um, the lights. There's a nice kind of vibrancy to things. Uh, we've got oranges. We've got yellows. We've got all sorts of lovely stuff going on. And I'm just going to come in here and describe the back of the cat there a little bit more with a red. And I think I'm going to describe it here a little bit more with a red. Don't mind if that red kind of creeps into the animal a little bit. Okay, now I just want a last little shot of a slightly deeper colour. So I'm going to take my pyrrole red, the more, more orangey red, drop that in there. Little extra shot of orange, uh, more kind of ready orange in there, and just on the turn of light and shadow in there. And then I'm going to let that dry, but I'm obviously going to speed it up. Just pull that out again. Just going to slightly richer quinacridone red and just kind of place that in there just kind of kind of describe the tiger a little bit but it's all about paint consistency I don't want that to shoot into the tiger too much so I'm kind of using um, a stronger paint consistency so we we'll still get a wet into wet feel with it but um, 
it will kind of stay where it's put a little bit more. And I'm just going to dry this off and then we're just going to dive into those big shadow shapes. So same principle, we've just painted the lights. I'm now going to dry this off, come in and paint the medium shadow first, then drop the deeper darks into that. Just while we let that dry, give me a moment to share a couple of things with you. I mentioned at the start my online watercolour school. This is fully up and running now. We've got new professionally filmed tutorials every two weeks, loads of techniques and tips videos. And then at the heart of the watercolour school is the online forum, which is really active now. Loads of artists sharing their work, asking questions, really fun place. Link in the description for that. The other thing that I have going on, if you are watching this early in 2023, Come March 2023, I am running a completely free of charge online watercolour masterclass. You can sign up with your email, link in the description. Hopefully I'll see you at one of those. Let's get back to the painting. All right guys, cool. So we've got about half an hour to really get this working. So let's go for it. So yeah, I went a little bit darker here. Um, going a little bit darker in places, but not too dark. This is still a bit wet, but by the time I get down there, I think it will dry. This is all nice and dry, so I can just come back over with my kind of my shadow colours. So what I'm going to be looking for here, just like the the cheetah, is if I really squint. Although there are stripes, there's the eye, uh, the mouth, the ear. There's orange in shadow. There's white in shadow. If I really, really squint. The ear, all of the shadow down here, into the eye socket, into the nose, bridge of the nose, down into there. That's all one big shape. And actually that big shadow shape continues down here into the stripes, into the anatomy of the animal. That's the big shape that's going to anchor this painting. That's why we can do whatever we want with the rest of it, as long as we have some big shapes that really anchor the, the painting and make it work. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. For me, the trickiest thing here is that we have the white in shadow, which is going to have a blueness to it, and we have the orange in shadow, which is just going to be a dark orange. Those colours are very opposing. They're literally complementary. They oppose each other. If they meet, they're going to create kind of a grey colour. That's not necessarily bad, but I don't want that colour to be everywhere too much. So I need to be very careful how I go about creating the face. Once we get the face working, uh, we are well and truly kind of on the way then. So let's just go for it. We're going to go for it. I'm going to start with the lighter colour, which is actually the blue in shadow, and I'm going to use my lavender colour with a little bit of the French ultramarine. And I want it to be watery enough uh, that it's just going to be nice and soft. And I'm just going to map out the shadow colour first. I could go a little bit darker than that. That's it, that's the, the tone. So water obviously with uh, watercolour dictating the tone that we achieve. And just coming down into there. Nice and simple. All of this is in shadow. So I'm just going to paint it in shadow initially. Or right up to here, in shadow, in shadow. There's a little bit of light just catching just there, but the rest all in shadow. All in shadow. All in shadow. So just very gently mapping out the shadow shape first. Always going to feel a bit weird to do so. That, like I said in the last one, that first bit of shadow always feels strange. Where can we go a little bit deeper? It's kind of... It's kind of deeper in there. And now we've got it in there. Now we can just kind of, we can kind of work with it a little bit. I need to think about the way that shadow pen kind of meets the light in this area. So I'm just going to soften it down a little bit. And we're going to come a little bit darker in there again. There's a little bit in there as well. And then I just want to paint the the orange in shadow. So quinacridone red and the Indian yellow. Still not thinking about stripes quite yet. Just kind of want to get a nice strong shadow shape in there. And that shadow shape comes down and meets here. And my hope is that the paint consistency 
means that the blue and the orange will kind of blend together a little bit but not too much. So down into here, down into the eye, and down into here, down into here. Let's encourage them to run at least a little bit together because they're not actually running together at all. So it'd be nice if they actually did run together a bit. Nice, strong shape in there. And now we're getting into some of the markings, but I'm going to paint them in orange initially. So we've kind of mapped out our shadow shape of the animal just in there. And little touch on there. So that's our first kind of pass on the shadow. And while it's wet, I'm going to come in and just hit this bit here and start chucking this bit into shadow as well. Okay, so and now this is still wet, so I want to darken it while it's wet. And now for the first time, we can start to paint the stripes a little bit. I'm going to choose to paint the stripes um, a little bit. I'm going to map out the dark. Although I'm mapping out it with red, it will eventually go to be a lovely rich black. But I'm kind of mapping it out. And I want to just push things a little bit darker while I've got the chance, while it's wet. There we go. That's better. It goes darker in there. There's quite a strong contrast in this painting. We don't have to go as strongly contrasted as the, paint, as the photo, obviously. We want to create a, a painting that's got a bit of a life of its own. But we can still go fairly high contrast, I feel. Darker in there. So I'm still not quite considering the stripes completely. However, I do want to get some in now into this area. They're going to come out of here and into this area. So starting to think about stripes. Notice how it's just blending a little bit into the blue. I'm quite thick paint consistency and just starting to blend into the blue a little bit and we're gonna get some of these lovely markings in there too too wet so it's blending in too much And then that, all of that mouth is lovely and dark as well. So we're getting those kind of markings in the face, kind of working. And then we're going to bring them now. Let's go bigger brush and let's start really getting some of these markings working on the animal itself. And then we can really start pushing it forward beyond that. Okay, so still with the still with the Indian yellow, bit of quinacridone red, and let's yeah, let's get some of these lovely markings in. Notice how I'm going very light. They look black on the photo. We might go black eventually, but initially, I'm just going very very simple, keeping them light, and. Always go darker. Got a lovely stripe just in there and just in there. Or again, just like the rest of the painting, always feels strange the first lot of stripes we put on. They feel a bit odd and out of place. That is literally darker there because it's because of the anatomy of the animal. But as we come into here, just going to soften some of that down a little bit. So we're sort of softening the stripes down to some extent. And coming out into here. So I'm using the same color for the shadow as I am for the stripes in sunlight, if that makes sense. Might not do initially. It's same, same color to do the stripe in sunlight there as what I'm then using to paint the shadow down here, lots more stripes down here, but they're kind of 
disappearing into nothingness as we get to down to this area. And that's kind of how I want it to feel, kind of disappearing into nothingness down there. And just some other nice bold stripes coming into there. So that, that's enough initially for the stripes. Doesn't need to be over the top initially. We can always go darker. So really liking the feeling of the face. That's working really well. I'm going to come in with some neat quinacridone red, touch of um, Prussian, and we can start to um, just build in some deeper darks in here. Notice it's still not that dark, still not as dark as we could go. Um, so in here we will have some much darker tones for the stripes. So very thick paint now and I'm starting to come into this area and really just pop in this amazing deep dark that we have on here. That sort of thing. And we have some amazing stripes in here and I'm painting them kind of wet into wet. Uh, in here, we go a little bit darker in the eye itself, coming out into here, which will go darker. Not as dark as the photo, we know that. Um, okay, so this is a funny little stage. It's kind of, we've got to work a few things out, but it's well on the way to working. Okay, that's all kind of working nicely. Um, we've got a few bold stripes to get in. So neat quinacridone red again. And let's make some of these stripes a little bit bolder, a little bit deeper. But just neat quinacridone red, maybe a touch of water if it's uh, in the light area. So notice it's still not pushing them towards black. The quinacridone red neat is really giving me all the tone that I need in terms of depth of tone. Darken that edge there. Darken that down in here. Nice thin. Don't make those easy to overstate the stripes because they're such a iconic feature of the animal. And there. And then start to paint some of these stripes in the shadows. It's just starting to get that sense of light and shadow a little bit more. Okay, so this is the, I'm kind of slowing down a bit here, just taking my time. We've got 15 minutes, that's plenty of time to make this work, but I just need to take my time at this moment. Okay, so thick paint into a wet area is giving us some really lovely effects. We can go even darker with some of these, so that stripe there might go really dark. If I went in too early to these stripes in shadow, they just kind of disappear into the surrounding area. Go in too late and you won't get the wet into wet feel, but I'd rather go in too late and then not have the wet into wet feel and kind of have them kind of merge in too much. That can, can be a real sort of danger uh, like that and then I love I love the idea of going a little bit darker as we kind of turn around the form of the the animal a little bit more there a little bit more there a little bit more there you can do some stripes down here but we're kind of fading into nothingness there um, this is all working really nicely it's not actually going to need that much to bring it to life, which is nice. Sometimes it needs a lot, sometimes it doesn't. I think we're going to get it fairly easily and simply. I think. I don't want to speak too soon, actually. But um, we've got some lovely shapes in here. A little bit more water to get them flowing. Like that. 
nice little marking in there. Notice I'm not painting them black, I'm painting them dark red. We can always go black if we decide that might be a better choice, but as I keep saying, easier to go, you know, easier to have to go darker than to do it too dark. Very hard to come back from doing it too dark, so I tend to err on the side of of um, slightly lighter. I think it's usually a sensible decision and we can we can always work with that. Okay, we're really very much homing in on the finish here quite quickly. There's, there's still a bit to do, but I'm, I'm happy with where it's at. And it's working for the most part in most places. Just fit, it isn't really in the photo, but it feels like it wants to have a little bit more texture in there. So I'm just gonna almost just pop a made up stripe in there and so come in and soften that down in there. Gonna come in a little bit darker. Again, we don't have to go as dark as the photo, but it feels like it wants to be a little bit darker uh, in, uh, uh, in there. got lovely deep rich dark we do need to paint those those lovely follicles we might even do some um, I think we will do some whiskers on this one it feels like it can handle it and it that it wants it it's a little bit too rigid so I'm just gonna pop it out and we're gonna create a little bit more depth of tone in here just push that tone a little bit more A little bit more depth of tone and then soften it down. Yeah, that's okay. Keep it simple right at the end. Don't start kind of over fussing it. <laughs> I'm talking to myself there as much as anything. Um, let's take that lovely lavender colour and look how the, the most of the ear here is just cast in shadow and if it meets that red and kind of blends in a little bit great just cast it in shadow very simply we could, we'll come back in and do more with it in a moment uh, we've completely neglected this ear over here so let's kind of address that it's got a little bit of orange on it which is nice and um, what else have we got going on? What else have we got to do? We've got to cast this area here in shadow. It's white under the eye of the tiger, but it's in shadow. So that's kind of nicely cast in shadow. And then this is a bit too light. Just taking the edge off it a tiny bit. That's better. And a little bit more cast in shadow there. Same principle, We're, I'm really homing in on the finish here. Uh, this, this is a marking as opposed to a shadow, so I'm just going to push it a little bit darker. And just in there, a little bit darker. And just some nice kind of finishing touches in this area, pushing it darker. We'll eventually push that a little bit darker. I've not quite got that right. Don't like what I've done there. That's better. Better. Um, okay, really, let's let's kind of go for this now. We're we're at that stage. Thicker quinacridone red. Almost neat quinacridone red. This will go darker in places in a moment. Um, this here is a lovely dark colour. Notice again, I'm not going to full black straight away. You'll probably notice like a, a bit of a recurring theme here that I don't always go to deep black straight away. Um, I kind of, I leave myself a little bit of room to decide how dark I want to go. Going to just chuck a little bit more shadow in that area there. Really, really 
kind of on it, on, on the brink here of, of the finish. It's really just the face to be brought to life and we think we've got it. I do want to go a little bit darker with some of the stripes in here. Let's go quinacridone red a little bit more. Nice and simple. And we've really just got the the nose to pop in. So there is a bit of colour in the nose, it's not all just a black nose, so I need to actually wash the colour in first and then um, leave that dry. Go do the rest of the face, come back, finish it off. That's the that's like the base colour for the nose. Uh, the follicles are still to do and some whiskers, but basically we're there. I just need to blast the hair dryer and I think we probably... Okay, we've got about five minutes, so that's just right to finish this off. Okay, let's just go for it. I think, guys, we go... We need a little bit more shadow on this big white patch above the eye, so that's the first thing to do. Um, that's going to give the whole area a little bit more structure and hopefully make it work a bit better. It's nearly there, it's not quite there, but it's nearly there. There's a little light just above and that needs to be glazed into shadow. And even that alone, that kind of those two little things have just given it a bit more, um, made, made sense of it a little bit more. So little little finishing details now. We're going to go a little bit darker maybe in the eye, I'm not sure. Little touches right at the end. Again, not going necessarily as dark as we can possibly go. It's not always the route to go. You'll find photos generally flatten things out a little bit. They tend to make our darks a little bit darker than they actually are. Um, and, our, and maybe blow out the lights a little bit. So I tend to tend to keep my darks from going too dark. Um, there's a little bit of touch in there. Um, uh, Tom, if any of us wanted to have a go, where would you suggest we got um, a reference photograph? From? Oh yeah, great uh, question. Great question. Uh, there's a fantastic group of um, uh, da, 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 uh, like copyright free websites uh, such as there's one called unsplash.com there's one called unsplash what I can do is I can send this list of these to Bev because it's probably the easiest thing but I'll mention a few of them um, is unsplash.com there's pixabay.com there's pexels.com uh, I will send a list to Bev, I think that's the easiest, isn't it? Um, and they have photos, public domain photos, so you can just use them for whatever you want. They have a fantastic selection and you completely copyright free. Uh, there is a fantastic website called wildlifereferencephotos.com. You have to pay for them, but they're very, um, they're very affordable, really, for how good the photos are. And um, what else have we got? Uh, there's African reference photos if you want, obviously, specifically African ones. Uh, there. So can, can you just like go on the internet and put that in the search yeah. engine and find it like that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you'll find it no problem. Um, and also, I do use iStock photos as well. I've, but that's that's like a paid monthly subscription. But again, it depends how 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 what you're willing to do. But that's a really great. Um, resource for photos oh, right. as well and yes, I noticed your, your, the cheetah one was I stopped. yeah I just I never got around to downloading the, the the one that I'd actually paid for um, but yeah this one's from iStock stock as well uh, and they, they have a fantastic selection of photos and I from in my opinion they they are still reasonably priced um, if you don't mind paying but yeah the the ones where they're free You've got a fantastic choice of photos in there. I've been quite amazed about what sort of level of photo you can find. So those would be my main ones. Um, oh, so do you mean you can just print them off on your own printer for nothing then? Absolutely. And even if you wanted to ex ex 
exhibit them or whatever or whatever you want to do with them you can they're completely free to use uh, and they're really good photos no problem. We we're pretty much there, guys. I'm just gonna. I do want to pop in a couple of um whiskers because tigers usually benefit from them. Not all the big cats do, but for some reason the the tigers seem to. Don't know why. I think it's because they're very dark down in this area and they can get a little bit heavy. And so um, I think a little bit of uh, some whiskers in there can really make a difference. So I'm just gonna do that, and then I think we are done with this one. So whiskers, I'm just going to use some, um, I'm going to use, do a few little whiskers in the kind of dark against light. So I'm going to just dry brush a few kind of into there. You might not even see them on screen. Um, just a few like that. There are a few kind of popping out of the, the eye area as well. And then for the ones getting hit by sunlight that are against shadow, I'm just going to use my tube white. Uh, obviously you can use masking fluid, uh, you can as well, if I caught it a bit earlier and it was still wet I could actually scratch them out with my fingernail but I missed that opportunity. You've also got, you could go in with a blade and take them out that way but I'm just going to use a bit of opaque white. I'm not going to try and do too many, um, just very quick flicks of the brush here and there. Um, less is definitely more with this sort of thing and I usually always do too many and then regret it but I'm going to try and keep it really simple and some of those coming out they can make a real difference to some of these big cats noted there's no feeling of them being light against shadow there but then coming into the light background so I'm just going to take my slightly watered down blue and I'm always going to follow a through on a couple of them into this area here which is um, which is kind of shadowy and even just a couple of random ones over there and there are a few um, around this area too so last little touches I promise and then I'll let you go <laughs> um, bit of light in there there's a couple just in there and that's that's probably about it actually that's plenty so there we go that's it guys That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. There's a potential for a tiger to be quite a complex subject, but hopefully you saw here, we can keep it very simple. We can just focus on what are the main characteristics and elements of the tiger, kind of bring those to life and have a lot of fun doing it, playing with the medium, throwing the paint around, a little bit of detail and dry brushwork at the end, and there we go. So I hope you got something out of it. Until next time, happy living, happy painting, and I'll see you very soon.